are concealed carry enthusiasts, concealed carry experts, and then there's Mike Larson. This guest is going to be hard to top when it comes to everyday carry expertise. Mike Larson has around three decades of experience with firearms instruction, and, and he's going to share his advice on choosing the right concealed carry gun holster, and he's going to talk about getting in the right mindset every time you conceal carry and carry a weapon. Mike spent six years in the Navy doing special weapons training. He's been in law enforcement for 26 years, and over the last two decades, he's been a firearms instructor, okay? Stick around to see what gun manufacturer Mike trusts most for his safety after three decades of experience with guns. This is Gearbox Talk with Mike Larson. Mike Larson, I got one of my guys in here who's my personal go-to for any time I have firearms questions. He's a buddy of mine, and I'm glad to get him on Gearbox Talk. Mike, how's it going, man? Good, Brad. Good to see you, man. All right, today Mike's gonna we're gonna go through quite a few questions on EDC. We're gonna talk about the the most important EDC item for self defense. Mike has uh, another tip that goes beyond your weapon. We're gonna talk about the safest holster, holsters that conceal well, and then Mike's gonna give a tip on how to follow state laws. Mike, as we like to do on Gearbox Talk, we're gonna dive right in, man. What is the most important everyday carry item to consider for your self defense? Well, most people always think of the firearm as part of an EDC and everybody that lays the pictures out on social media, that's what you see. But I never like to talk about any of that until you preface it with your mindset, using your brain. That's something that we take with us everywhere, but it has to come to the forefront when we're going to be prepared to defend ourselves or somebody else. So when you leave the house and you grab that kit, uh, whatever pistol, whatever knife, whatever other gear you carry with, you have to have the understanding that you're responsible for anything that you do with that. So what I like to do is make sure people get proper training. That's from somebody other than themselves or a family member because uh, coaching and being a firearms instructor for over 20 years, I've found that I can get people to listen to me uh, if they don't know me as well because they don't take certain things for granted. They don't let certain biases get in the way. Um, but you also got to have a basic understanding of, of the laws. So I always start with, if you're willing uh, to carry, make sure that you don't bring a gun to a fist fight. So road rage situations, uh, somebody getting loud, uh, somebody doesn't like that you took their parking spot. Those are not the times to use that. These are, these are scary times. We've seen a lot of things happen at schools and at malls and at nightclubs. And I never leave home without the ability to protect myself or the people that I love. And then quite honestly, people I've never even met. So always have that mindset. Make sure that you have very diverse training. Make sure that you're very proficient with everything that you are carrying. Uh, and then be prepared uh, for what you're going to go through if you end up in that situation. Um, you're going to be scrutinized by the media, by society, uh, by the law. Um, and make sure you cooperate fully with law enforcement. So the mindset is, is that you, you have that self-control to only enter into what you're prepared for, what's necessary, and then how to uh, get through that uh, with the least amount of damage, uh, both to you physically and, and financially and, and your freedom. I love that answer first. That's, that's great. And you can tell your firearms instructor, like, I'll tell you about the gun in a second, but let's talk about the mindset first. All right. So with, with that, uh, get proper training. I love that as your answer. What's the firearm or, or weapon that you tend to lean towards for someone that's looking to have an everyday carry? Okay. What I tell people is don't, don't go with what's flashy and fancy or what somebody else uses. Uh, just if you were going to buy a bow or a shotgun or, or a handgun or a rifle, Make sure that what you're using is something that fits you. So uh, during training, I'll, I'll talk about uh, isosceles and weaver and modified weaver, and I tell you to forget all of that. If I'm training Brad Luttrell how to shoot a gun, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Brad Luttrell the Luttrell stance. I'm going to teach you how to use your center of gravity, how to, how to maximize that. So for me personally, I like semi-automatic handguns. Some people shoot wheel guns better, revolvers. Um, as far as semi-automatics go, I'm a Glock guy. 
you know, uh, between the military and, and law enforcement, I've, I've been exposed to that. Uh, I've <laughs> used it. Uh, it's my go-to. I know it inside and out. I've, I've beat the crap out of mine. Um, I've conducted tests uh, for companies and, and for ourselves. Uh, and, and Glock just, it comes through, it holds up. So the next thing is to make sure you get one that fits your hand. Yep. If, if you don't have a proper grip, uh, everything goes out the window. So when we talk about holsters, when we talk about everything else, we're basically going to start with the grip. Th that's the first thing that has to happen. Um, it has to be able to allow you to line everything up and do what you want to do with it. It has to be able to be repeatable. So as you are at the range and you're going to empty a magazine, you have to be able to maintain that exact grip the whole time. Uh, you don't want that gun moving around or anything, but that, that's my answer is I'm a Glock guy. Uh, I like a full size Glock 22. Most of my carry off duty, uh, especially in the summertime is a Glock 43, just because it's a little bit smaller, has a smaller profile. It's easier to conceal. Uh, but that that's something you can't go wrong with. And I have nothing against Kimber and Sig and Taurus, uh, Smith and Wesson, you name it, but I'm a Glock guy. I'm a Glock guy too. I, I have a, I got the 24, which some people laugh about because they are so small and it's compact. They, they even get the nickname of the baby, but I like my baby Glock because it fits well. It conceals well. It feels right. I like the weight of it. I love the sights on the Glocks. Like I, it's, it's what I shoot well. So I told totally well, and that goes back that. to your mindset, the mindset, if you're comfortable with it, you're going to be proficient with it. So yep. that's great. It's by far the pistol I've put the most rounds through too. Okay. So you, you, talked about um about being comfortable with your pistol which i think gets overlooked a lot uh there, there's a lot of discussion around the holster and, and being comfortable and carry but i also think man like, there's some holsters that just aren't necessarily safe what holster do you recommend for somebody carrying uh from a safety aspect what we can talk about type of holster and brands if you have a recommendation sure yeah there, there's basically three types of holsters that I utilize. Uh, obviously on duty in law enforcement, we're gonna use one that has the highest retention level, uh, uh, you know, level three or, or more. Um, but the safest is, is one that's gonna contain the firearm. Um, what, one of the things that I'll show you here is, I never like to hold guns without showing everybody it's safe, <laughs> it's clear, yep. no magazine. But for, for concealed carry off duty, uh, if I'm wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and I want to do an appendix inside the waistband carry, I love this sticky holster. Uh, sticky holsters uh, are pretty cheap. Uh, I have two of them, one that I use on duty uh, that can kind of be concealed in a different spot, um, but they're very nice. They conform to the gun and it is very safe. So when you, when you look at the names of, of holsters, they're either going to be passive retention or active retention. Passive retention just means that, that, that the holster itself is going to hold the gun. But if I want to remove it, I simply pull it out. Uh, another example of a passive re uh, retention handgun holster on a paddle holster, which this is a Phobos. I've had this for probably 20 years. You can see that it's not splitting, cracking, uh, very heavy duty. But this is also uh, a passive retention. So I can hold it upside down. I can run around with it. It's not going to fall out. But all I got to do is grab it and pull, and it comes out. I don't have to actuate anything. Mm -hmm. For on duty, and if it's in the winter time, if I'm going to go uh, to an event that, for whatever reason, I think might have a higher risk, and I want to up my retention, then I'll go with a level two or a level three, which this pedal holster is very similar to that Phobos, but it's, it's a uh, active retention holster so that when it's in there and I hold it, yeah. you know, it holds it itself, but I can't, I can't pull it out unless I actuate something. So with this one, it happens to be a thumb break and it's a little bit harder to do when it's not on your body because it's not holding that side in, but you depress the thumb break and then you get it out. So retention is also part of that mindset. And you have to understand that if you're going to enter into conflict, somebody else in that fight, because most of those occur at very, very close distances. You know, the, the TV shows where they're making 40 and 50 yard engagements uh, with a threat aren't realistic. They're going to be close. Uh, and eventually you're going to go hands on. Uh, you know, people are going to close that gap and, and you're going to want to as well. 
uh, but only to a certain point. You want to make sure that nobody can get that away from you. Um, so part of your training should also be how to use these tools for retention. Uh, safest overall is one that's going to be something that doesn't expose the trigger to outside elements. If you've seen uh, the fleece pullovers and, and some of the Henleys that have the elastic cords with the little plastic clip yeah, that you yeah. can adjust and, and tighten. Sorry about that. You're right. Uh, what you're going to run into there, and it's happened before, is that little clip hangs right about where your where your holster is, and when you go to put it back in, it gets inside that trigger guide and guard, and people actuate the trigger. Uh, I know police officers that have shot themselves right down the leg by doing that. So the safest one is going to be one that you uh, can get that firearm in and out, establishing your grip in it. You don't want to have to fumble with it once you've got it out. Um, the other thing on this sticky holster is that when you draw, for whatever reason, never place it back in so that if I keep this in my waistband, I draw my weapon, the first thing I'm going to do when I want to reholster is I'm going to pull that out. Yeah. So then it goes back in and then the entire setup goes. On a paddle holster or a, a belt holster, obviously you can leave that holster in place and, and uh, be careful putting it back in. But the safest one is going to be one that protects that firearm from any kind of accident of discharge or that's going to end up in the wrong hands because it's easy to get during a struggle. Love the tip of pulling your uh, a fabric holster out because I just saw a picture the other day of somebody that shot themselves in the butt from the, the cloth holster that was well-worn and folded inward, hit the trigger when they were uh, placing their gun back in the holster, yep. and he actually shot himself. I think that's really important. That's a really great tip. Um, now, let's let's take that what you just said and, and – um, let's assume a safe holster, but what, what types of holsters do you think conceal the best? Well, honestly, one that, that hides the outline. So conceal is something that, that you're going to put somewhere that you can either cover with a shirt or you can cover with a coat. You can put it into a pocket. You don't want the outline of that firearm to be, to be easily seen. So, uh, the thing I like about this sticky holster again, is that, it's flat. It conforms to the gun and it holds it, but it hides that outline. So you're not walking around in a grocery store and having somebody look at you and realize there's a gun in your pocket. Um, or there's a butt of a pistol, the grip, I keep doing that, you're right. uh, sticking out through the shirt. I think that's a good tip. I actually have a kind of a sticky, it's similar to that. And it's the same thing. It actually, um, right there it you know it conceals uh the, the shape really well and it's it's kind of i think it's similar to the sticky brand i haven't used the sticky brand this one is a uh, black hawk um but it, it fits in a similar fashion um and and it can it conceals the shape of the gun really well and, and i i like i too like that it covers the trigger and i'm not i don't have to worry about a pocket discharge incident um mike you, you deal with this all the time man with with traveling and i think uh there's a, there's going to be eight million new gun owners this year and a lot of people are looking at concealed carry classes. And, and a lot of states, though, like Kentucky, you can carry without that concealed carry license, but that doesn't mean you can travel. So can you talk through a little bit on um, less about gear in this answer, but more of how to research and just be aware of the gun laws? Sure. The, the easiest thing for interstate travel is if, if you just search uh, reciprocity. Uh, the NRA has got a lot of good information on that. But the biggest thing is going to be if, if I live in Michigan and I have uh, a concealed pistol license, um, which honestly I don't as a police officer, I don't need one right now. Um, but if I had one, I would want to make sure that any state I was traveling through. So I do a lot of elk and mule deer hunting out West. And, and I can tell you right now, we pull into a rest area right before we go through Chicago and everything comes off and it gets separated and, and conforms to local laws. And then we get through and we make another stop and we put everything back. So uh, the NRA is a, is a really good website, uh, has a really good website. You just search reciprocity and it'll tell you. But that means uh, you have to meet the standard in your own state and then make sure that your state has reciprocity with another state so that they honor each other's. Awesome tip, dude. Mike, this is a great EDC breakdown. I think it's it, very helpful for beginners. I really appreciate you coming on and spending a few minutes to, to share, you know, more than two decades of knowledge on, on firearm safety, dude. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Nice seeing you, man. All right. Thanks, Mike. Take care. All right. Thank you, Mike.
Mike Larson. It's an honor to have guys like Mike on the show. You know, along with uh, James Nash, who was recently on the show to talk about broadheads. Mike is one of the most knowledgeable people I know about the outdoors and firearms. I thank Mike and James for their service in our military, and I'm really grateful to Mike for his continued service to his community as a police officer. Thank you, buddy. You can join Mike and other first responders on Go Wild, where you, they, we have an entire platform and, and forum set up for EMTs, police officers, and others who serve their communities. So hit the download link in the show notes and you can find how to join. All gear mentioned is linked to in, in the video or podcast description. And if you happen to buy anything through there, there's a good chance that Go Wild will get a commission of that sale. And we donate 1% of our revenue to a nonprofit called Raise Them Outdoors. It's a camp that teaches kids how to get outside and how to shoot guns. And, uh, you know, they teach them safety and a lot of hunting ex- and fishing ex- skills. It's an awesome, awesome program. And you can help out by purchasing through those links. If you really did enjoy this show, check out my other EDC show with Wes Robinson. It's a thorough breakdown of Wes's EDC approach. It's a really great show. It's a little bit longer of a discussion and I really enjoyed it. And finally, if you do like this show, please subscribe. I mean, it's the right thing to do. You're still with me here clinging to every word, soaking up every bit of knowledge that you can. So you clearly like gear talks and I can't think of a reason not to subscribe. If you have a good reason, I'm all ears. All right, nothing. All right, that's what I thought. So drop some comments if you have any more questions. I'll address those in future shows as we have relevant guests on. But for today, that's it. I'm out. (laughs) 